to another episode of Man Club. Today we're going to do something short and sweet and pretty easy. This is one for the uh, novice man clubber in you, or novice DIYer. Uh, I was talking to my brother the other day, and he's like, hey, you've got all these videos, and uh, you really should try to cover some more of the basic stuff for, you know, people who haven't done much but want to try to get, you know, their hands dirty and uh, get involved in working with the car. So today we're going to do something pretty easy. Um, anybody can do this, I really think. This is a... Uh, changing the air filter for the engine and uh, while we have that open we're gonna go ahead and uh, just pop out the uh, mass airflow sensor and uh, clean that too this is gonna be on my wife's element but uh, most Hondas are gonna look pretty similar if not the same um, and and this this procedure can be applied on any Honda car so without further ado let's get going for today's episode we're gonna use some gloves some eye protection. I bought a can of this CRC Mass Airflow Cleaner. Uh, Phillips screwdriver, a 10 mil disconnected battery, a new Honda or decent aftermarket filter, and a, a piece of cardboard to uh, catch all the overspray from the cleaner. So the first thing we're going to do, since we're going to be messing with the uh, Mass Airflow sensor today, uh, we're just going to disconnect the negative terminal on the uh, battery and this is a 10 millimeter um, you just loosen it up and uh, pull it off so we're standing on the driver's side and right behind the battery is this big box and inside this box here right here is the air cleaner and as you can see here at Man Club, we put a label on because we can't remember shit anymore. So we got 1211. So this filter has been in here for a year. So it's probably time to change it. Um, some of these will have uh, screws. This one simply has these clips. There's uh, two here in the front. There's another one on the side. And then two in the back. You just pop them off. I'm wearing gloves. And you just grab this this whole hose in the assembly, and you can you can kind of wrestle with it, and it will eventually pop out of the way to show you the filter. So here's what the old one looked like. As you can see, it's a little nasty, a little dirty. Um, we'll just open this new one up. So you can see what it should look like and what it did look like. Okay, since we got this guy open, you can kind of see down inside here. You know, there's some <laughs> there's some stuff that made it through. I mean, the gravity does its job, but it all some sometimes uh, debris or whatever lands inside this air box. We've got it open. Let's get the vacuum out and we'll uh, clean it up. Okay, it looks a lot better. We've got the uh, dead bugs and whatnot out of there. Um, next, I'm just going to take a little rag. And this is probably going above and beyond everything, but just with a little bit of water, not much. Just enough. Try to get a little bit of that dust and stuff out of here. And then we'll put our filter back in. The last thing I was going to show you is uh, just wipe around this edge where it seals. And, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be super clean. Um, but just tidy it up a little bit because whatever makes it through and gets above the filter will be sucked in to your intake, which is no good. That's looking pretty good there. Okay, next we're going to put the filter back in now that everything's cleaned up and uh, it's not dry. Uh, it's dry. Uh, if you forget which way goes up it'll tell you this is a Honda OEM filter uh, so the, basically the green goes towards the bottom and we'll just uh, slide it in under everything make sure it's seated correctly then we pop this guy back down make sure it's seated well 
and then start pulling these uh, clips back up. Make sure that you clip every single one of them and then there's no air gap. That looks good. Some of these have screws, but same thing. You just line it up and you would just screw them back down. Next, let's tackle this mass airflow sensor. So the mass airflow sensor is mounted somewhere after the filter. And uh, on ours, it's very easy. It's right here on the top. This is the box we just changed the filter out of. It always has an electrical connection, which we just push the little tab and pull off to the side. And then uh, there's, there's a couple of uh, Phillips head screws here that we shall remove. And be careful not to drop or lose. Uh, you will notice I'm wearing gloves here. We do not want to handle this sensitive, expensive piece of electronics with our bare fingers. So, I've got those two guys out. Screws are out. Electrical connections off. And there's a little seal there. And this is the guy here. Doesn't look like much, but we'll, uh, we'll clean him up. This is what we're going to be using today for the job. It's a CRC Mass Airflow Cleaner. And I like the big, bold claim on the front here. Proven gain of 4 to 10 horsepower at the wheels. We'll see about that. But uh, I'm just going to pop off the lid, put on our safety glasses, um, put in the straw. And uh, we have it on cardboard to catch all the nastiness. Now you can see there's a little sensor right there. I'm going to hit it really liberally. And there's also a couple more sensors down inside there. Like I said, liberal use of the spray. I think that should do it. Now we'll just uh, pull them out of the puddle, let them drip off, and uh, it seems like this stuff is evaporating rather quickly, but we do not want to uh, plug it back in or energize it while it's still wet. Well, the cleaner does dry rather quickly. Uh, it looks pretty good here. Uh, you really don't want to handle any of these electronics. They're pretty shielded from pla uh, with the plastics. But um, we'll just slowly and gently set that back down in there. It has an O-ring seal. Then we'll put our screws back in. And uh, this one is winding down, but uh, they are suggesting the manufacturer of the spray suggests that we do this every time we clean the filter it's really not that difficult to do and that can was only like eight bucks I think I got it at AutoZone so not too bad there it is after we've double checked all our connections and our airbox tightness we come back over the battery, reconnect our 10 mil nut here to the negative post. That is that. Now we will have to go probably do a radio code or something like this inside. And uh, I think that's about it. We'll see how it runs. I'm thinking it's probably going to be a little, a little smoother than before. You might see a uh, MPG. One, one better, who knows, one to two. Got a fresh breather, and we're now computing a better calculation of the airflow coming in, which gets fed into the computer as, as it uses more or less gasoline to match the airflow. So this is, uh, this is important to keep clean. And last but not least, I like to uh, wipe off where the old date tag was. And uh, I'll put a new one on there, just so I know when I changed it. I don't have to go look on a computer or just pop the hood and go, oh yeah, I changed that in December of 2012. 
I was shooting a man club video. I just tape it on there, and that'll last for a year. And that's that. Well, this concludes another episode of Man Club. Today was a quick and dirty lesson on how to change the air filter and clean the mass airflow sensor. Sometimes if those mass airflow sensors get too dirty, you'll start triggering uh, check engine codes. Uh, I think it's like some banks one and two get too lean because it's not being able to read uh, the proper amount of airflow coming in and it's it's not mixing the fuel right. So uh, if you have something like that on both banks, more than likely I'd start with a you know cheap $8 attempt at a fix by cleaning out your mass airflow sensor. And I think really after doing this and changing the filter, you know, it's going to run a little better for her. And uh, that makes me happy. So until next time, keep them hanging.